Hey there, team. Oh, dearie me. Oh, dang it. I was hoping that would be a nice cinematic start, but I forgot my spawn for this. It was right at the back. Oh, no, it's frozen a little bit. No, we're okay. We're okay. Yep, immediately, of course, when you spawn on Karndom, you got to grab your stuff and move off because if you accidentally end your deployment phase up here, there is no way off. You're stuck. Some sneaky buggers sometimes do spawn something up here and then run it down or like sit here and try to shoot at the enemy, but it's not worth it, dude. It ain't worth it, and it's very sneaky, and it's very just <laughs> scummy, scummy stuff. But, uh, hey, it is what it is. So, we grabbed our stuff. Playing as Gondor today on the attack, and I remember this battle a bit better than I remember the last one. Let me see, what do we have? Gondor, myself. Over here, we've got Dwarves of Erebor. Oh, is this a good on the attack? Please tell me. Uh, ah, no, it's not. Blue Ranger there, playing as Misty. And we've got Numenor and Rudour. I guess, um... We can maybe fight uh, as uh, we've got some uh, little gobble mercenaries or little gobbles that we forced into service here and, and the Rudauer mountain men or Rudauer hillmen have had a change of heart. We've got Angmar on the defence, uh, but we'll see. I think there might be some other good factions on the defence, but hey, we can uh, we can hope for the best. Gondor, I like to play Gondor on sieges. I like to play Gondor in a field battle too, to be honest. They're, uh, they're definitely a nice faction for me. Sorry, I'm moving them around a lot, trying to free my mouse cable. There we go. Um, but I don't usually take them to an attack. I like to play them on a siege defense mainly, but a siege attack, a little bit more nerve-wracking. But anyway, got my Gondorian spearmen up front, nicely beefed up there. Max armor, I think we've got max armor for absolutely everything in my roster today. Got my Gondorian archers there too, maxed armor. Nimlothian honor guard, that's not where I put my general. Yes, I know where I've got my general. Wardens of the White Tower, still sword and board, but not for too much longer. Switching out to a Swordmaster unit, I think it's pretty solid. Um, I am I am looking forward to that. I think uh, they kind of do get outshone a bit by the Nimlothian Honor Guard. You know, if you want a if you want a sword, well, if you want a, a, a weapon and shield, why not just go for the Nimlothian Honor Guard? I think it'd be nice to get another Swordmaster back into the roster for Gondor. Veterans of Asgiliath, that's where I've got my general. Um, I know he doesn't get an extra hit point because he's part of a single hit point unit, but I like him in an archer general unit. I'm only I'm always gonna bring the veterans of his Giliath. Why not just shove them in there? And it means I can more freely use these elites. Uh, behind them, Belagon Marines, I think, uh, and then uh, yeah, well, definitely. Sorry, I, I was, I'll go back to one time speed. Belagon Marines here deployed around a, an invisible stone, which is nice. Then Axemen, again, max armor creates for the Axemen. Behind them, some Gondorian infantry and Fountain Guard, of course, two units of Fountain Guard. In the back, my Raven Helms. Now, I don't usually take Ravenhelms. I'm usually quite disappointed by Ravenhelms, but I thought, hell, grab them. Why not? I'm, damn, I'm not going to be taking Cav, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll settle for this. I don't need too many spears. So, leaving my Siege Tower behind, leaving my Ram behind, um, I don't need them. I'm deploying back here. My job is just getting as quickly as possible to back up my allies. First of which is Viverax. He's got the Dwarves of Erebor today, very, very powerful Siege faction. Uh, very powerful in a field battle too, really. Uh, double crossbows, iron foot warriors, and uh, Erebor legionnaires, axe guard there, halberdiers, spearmen, spears, and warriors. Yeah, just solid, and dragon slayers. A lot of numbers which Erebor can take. They can really pour just funds into their into their iron foot units, but saying that, they do have a lot of good quality as well. Yeah, it's, it's just good from Erebor. I like to go pretty numbers heavy when I play as Erebor, and of course he's gone for the sturdy um, siege wall line of defense. Uh, then, Blue Ranger, he's got his halberdiers, nice, cheap, slow, but uh, they'll, they'll, you know, with the siege, they'll get there, and they'll do the job. Infantry, Goblin Archers, Black Orcs amount, I love these guys, they're very, very good. Uh, spears there, AP Spears. Infantry again, yeah, just really our numbers. Lots and lots of numbers. We surely have some mountain or a coast. No, I think he's a man. He is a man after my own heart. Nice. Yeah, I don't like to take too many of them. Um, yeah. Well, they're fantastic. Oh, there, there are some. There are some. They're a very good unit, and I'm glad Misty's got them. But they're not going to have them, you know, when Dol Guldur pops up. So I'm trying not to get too used to them in the roster. Gilgalad over here is playing as Numenor. Numenor in cohort out front, then Royal Guard and Pikes. Ooh, anything really surprising from this? No. Belagar units, good to see. Farzim Swordmasters and Royal Legion of our men are lost. But nothing nothing there that I'm like, oh, why the hell is he taking that? Um, then we've got Rudauer played by King Ragnar. So he's got his swordsmen, 
his clan, uh, clan, well, sorry, Rudar clansmen, and more swordsmen, axemen, axemen, marksmen. He's got a catapult. Uh, more marksmen, clansmen, Dunman pikes, and Herenadain pikes. Two units off them. Yeah. Um, as I say, I don't usually like. I, I very rarely advise people to go into the red limit. Usually, it's a bad idea. But when it comes to Rudauer on a siege, I think taking two Herenadain pikes is not a bad idea. Now, am I, I'm looking over. Is this the battle that I think it is? No, I only see one siege weapon, unless I'm being really dumb. No, I had a, I had a siege of Karn Doom recently where we did bring uh, two siege weapons on the attack, and we had to basically just ignore one of them, which is always a shame. Just a bit of wasted money, but it's uh, you know it's our it's our fault for taking that. But deployment has finished. Looking inside, Dol Amroth, yeah, played by Mighty Mirko. So it's a little bit tougher to explain this away. Perhaps we can say something along the lines of a a treacherous Dol Amroth has uh, has turned sides and betrayed uh, betrayed Gondor. But he's got his Wanderers in Emberdale there, Pikes there, and Halberdiers too. More Wanderers in Emberdale. They've got a catapult standing by. Double Haven Guard, double Parathel Champions, Belfast Marines, and Knights of the Silver Swan. We've got some Barrow Whites here. It's always good to divide up your Barrow Whites. Don't hoard them together. Try and have them uh, nicely spread out. Tirithair Marksmen, Dismount Knights of the Silver Swan, just to keep everybody in line. And also just a decent uh, sword and board guy for the front line. Then Pikes with that armor upgrade, which is good to see. Good to bad guard. More Barrow Whites here in the center. Angmar Marauders. Halberdiers. More, more armor upgraded Pikes. Just not fun to try and break through these guys. And wow, some very, well, some upgraded uh, good to bad guard. You can see that with a lot of these uh, dwarven armor units. This helmet there and the shields uh, mixed in amongst their force. So they are not going to go down easy. They're going to really hold the line quite nicely. Temple Guard there from Sun, playing as Mordor. So yeah, we can maybe just explain that way with some uh, some uh, Dol Amroth, uh, Dol Amroth betray, betraying going on there, and then uh, just some Orc mercenaries, I don't know. Uh, Uruk Captains there, General is in with them. With the, Yeah, no, they're not Bulldogs anymore, they're Uruk Captains. Uh, Troll Drummers, Minas Morgul Chosen, more on Halberdiers, Orc Maulers triple uh, barrow white so he's got one i think that's good have one for every gateway uh we are going to be busting in some open uh, well some extra access ways i think we'll go to one time speed because we do have some shuffling before we do anything fancy but i'll uh i'll keep an eye on that and there is no cavalry running out so yeah we're, we're good Naz two nazgul now i've been uh I've been absolutely rused by a double Nazgul defensive car and doom before I attacked with Dol Amroth and I got nowhere just because there were two two units of Nazgul just tearing through my boys. Kit, kept in reserve at the back here with some Guardians of Karndoom, Blackwatch Legion, Hammer Guard there with the armor upgrade. Scourge Raiders, Witchers, I thought that was mo another unit of Nazgul for a second. There has been, uh, we have seen a successful uh, use of triple Nazgul before, but cheaper sake, that's not cheap. Uh, Goblin Trackers and the Scourge Rage. Actually, sir, was it double Nazgul or triple? Hmm, might have just been trouble. Uh, two units here of the Gardens of Karn Doom as well. Nothing all the way back, uh, which I think is a good idea. Um, leaving them here is, is good enough. Like, we're not going to be able to push all the way to the middle in, in that much time. So just just have them at least so you can pull them into the fight if you, if you need them quickly. I think we might actually be going to two times speed. But uh, we'll hold off for a second. I am, uh, of course, playing a lot of Divide and Conquer recently. I'm uh, I'm quite worried about towers. Towers and Divide and... Oh, well, I'm very worried about that tower. <laughs> Just phasing through the ground. Um, well, phasing through the enemy tower there. Uh, of course, towers and Divide and Conquer are very powerful. But, of course, being a campaign focus, that's really what you want from your towers. You want to take a siege... Well, a siege should be very, very tough. Whereas in Reforged, we kind of are happy with our towers. And I, I yeah, I, like I find towers to be quite annoying when you're on the attack, but uh, you know, they never really do too much. Like, especially when you're shooting at these dwarves. They've, I don't think, taken a single casualty from all that fire. Uh, the orcs, no doubt, have not been as lucky with the heavy goblin infantry. Let's go back to one time speed there. Heavy goblin infantry taking a casualty, but uh, only, oh yeah, a few more there and there, but, uh, but not too much really. If they do hang around though, that will be a constant stream of damage. And coming on this way, and the Numenorians have arrived as well. So having a, some clear shots into uh, the Belagar boys really 
uh, we'll be able to shrug that off and it's not too important. But if we lost a, you know, even one Numenorean shield guard, that would be a damn shame. Um, Orc Maulers rushing up onto the walls, getting ready to meet the shield guard if the shield guard do face them. That would be quite a cost effective trade for the Maulers. Uh, the shield guard really would be our wanting to go up against a heavier unit. Oh, damn, speaking of that, we have lost a shield guard there to the tower's fire. Uh, you know, what you want up against the Maulers really, even, well, without this armor upgrade, they really are just the, the basic Maulers there. You really are wanting a, um, oh, just a generic sword and board to mince through them. Let's turn up the, I'm not hearing anything from the, from the background noises. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure my sound is on, let's, uh, nope, oh well. Anyway, we'll try and see if we hear stuff later on, but, uh, Goblin Infantry there just pressed right up against the wall, but those towers do not care. It will just continue to fire away, but really not take too many casualties. Uh, I'm just coming around. Fountain Guard, of course, faster pike walking animation, or halberd walking animation, phalanx walking animation, you could say. Uh, they're going to get there long before everybody else does. But uh, yeah, I'm really going to be relying on these two units of Fountain Guard to get a hell of a lot of damage done on the enemy. And uh, there's something that the, the enemy doesn't have a have a great counter to. Perfect unit to be mowing through heaps and heaps of barrel whites. So that's Medieval Feud as well, playing as playing as Angmar. Don't think I called him out before. Uh, looking over here. Yes, nothing, 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 nothing. Cool. Might actually go... Oh, no. I was about to go back up to a faster speed, but... Maulers are coming out against the Belagar footmen. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, as, yeah, we're getting a little lag spike there, but that's just because that, uh, that side of the wall is coming down. Um, Belgar footmen there, to be honest, if they squish together, they can, that'd be quite an efficient exchange for the Belgar footmen. Being spearmen, they rely a lot more on that melee defense to keep them safe, rather than their armor value, which is, uh, meddling. Ah, this is a bit more messy, though. They really do lack the damage to be getting through these Olog High. So the Olakai will hurt them real bad. Those shield guard are coming on forward. They've shield guard with their armor piercing stabs. Will uh, will do some good work against the Olakai. But Sun is going to know that. And this is kind of the issue with having so few units up here. We've seen this. Mordor has been really good at this uh, in the past few times I've played Karndom. Really sort of running on out with uh, with an aggressive uh, at action from these Olakai. And doing some good work. But uh, a lot of these Belagar footmen are going down. And those poor spears are doing uh, are, are struggling there. But the, the Orc Maulers will be hurting them quite badly. We're actually firing into them with Belagar Archers. Eh, Orc Maulers, perfect target, really. Um, no shield. Not great armor. Some some armor, but not, not really anything too too fancy. So Belagar Archer will be hurting them nicely. Uh, but it's all about just, at this stage, just bringing down sections of the wall and waiting for me to get into position. Uh, because in the center, Blue Ranger, mm, he's by himself out there. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of dividing. I'm going to be setting my army up right here. And kind of like in the same battle, like, well, kind of like in the in the Tolfa last battle, I'm going to be splitting my army into two chunks, backing up uh, Vivrax with half and backing up Blue Ranger with the other half. And uh, we, were, we were discussing this and, uh, you know, I was sort of explaining what I was going to be doing, but... We were all just kind of go with the flow. Don't you know? Don't worry too much about uh, about a steadfast plan, which is a is a good way to play it. Like if you go in there with a with a fully worked out plan, that's awesome. But as soon as you really get the first snag of that plan, you're you're stuffed. Now I really liked his his super aggressive use of the Haven Guard. One Haven Guard unit on either side, and to counter those Haven Guard efficiently. We're going to need to actually send up some good quality. I'm going to have to set up my bloody Nimlothian Honor Guard or my uh, my Warren's the White Tower. And when the enemy's got full ammunition, these Belfast Marines, even Terathera Marksmen, whatever, that's that's exactly what they want to be coming shooting at. They, If I come in there with my uh, Gondorian Infantry, which I want to do, the Gondorian Infantry are just going to get splatted by the, uh, by the Haven Guard and really not gain anything from that. But... Um, if I come in there with my elite units, then he's going to counter me with the uh, jabs. Firing in there with goblin trackers. Oh, God. You know, goblins v. goblins. That's always an upsetting sight. But uh, heavy goblin infantry, to be honest. Uh, if they are facing the front of that fire, not bad. Not really too much of an issue. Their armor value is significant for the price of their unit. They, You know, goblins know how to make armor. Not good armor, but they know how to make some armor. 
and uh, with that little shield value, they can they can take shots to the face for a while, and they're quite cost effective for it. But at the same time, medieval feuds goblin trackers are not something he's relying upon. I love this last. Oh damn! Oh damn! He just died. But this this last guy just walking out, just at his own pace. He's like, yeah, guys, I'm not scared. I know you're just a bunch of ghosts and stuff. It is what it is. Ah, crossbowman up here. Um, hmm. We see this a lot now, just people moving up to the top level there. Now, the great thing about that is you can actually sort of fire quite nicely. Oh, very well placed, Blue Ranger. This is great. I was going to say a lot of the time people get about halfway up, but like half the unit is, is like in the other stages of the tower. And um, so when they fire, most of them are just firing straight into a wall. But he's managed to get his entire unit squished up here. And, uh, oh god, this is really where you'd want to take down that tower with a catapult, or just get one successful hit right into the top. Ooh. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm sorry, Blue Ranger. Yeah, so, so much of that fire just got absorbed. The shots that did get through did some damage, but, um, but no, that was, oh, like, maybe 20 of them got their shots through. The vast majority, and he did notice that, though he was watching it. But still, something you got to be watching out for with that strategy. Belgar Footman watching the ground here. Ooh, a, so we've got dropped Olakai, which means that some of the other Olakai will definitely be down a few hit points. And these Maulers went down too. Oh my god, if we got some Rudar Swordsmen in there up against those Maulers, that would be an amazing counter. We did lose a lot of Belgar Footmen, and we lost a few Numenorean Shield Guard. But damage to the Olakai, a, a unit of Orc Maulers, dead or pretty much dead, uh, is an okay trade, you know. Good, you know, I don't think either side can really be too upset with how that went. They dealt some damage to us, but we did make them pay for it. Oh, catapult shot coming in. All three missed. Had that hit nicely. Yeah, he's moving now. But had that hit perfectly into the, into the temple guard, killing even, you know, like, what, 15 temple guard? Very worth it, I feel. Uh, temple guard are damn good in melee, even after, after they use up their ammunition. But I think we did want those towers taken out. Well, not towers. Sorry, we wanted walls broken through. So it was a great, it was a, it was a good target. But uh, we'd really prefer you to bring down the walls. Got my Gondorian archers over here now. Nice. I almost thought they were Gondorian infantry because you know you don't often see them sort of maxed armor upgraded like this. I do like to do it just because, as I say, my skirmishers. Well, yeah, yeah, my archers are there to take fire. So if I give them the armor upgrades like this, it's perfect, perfectly what it's for. But with Karn Doom, you can get some decent shots sometimes. So I'm gathering my boys up, and, and sometimes you can get some shots, like, on the side here. Oh, wow. Fire arrows pouring in here. These guys just a little bit too short for it. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Firing up again. Hmm. Now, the thing is, could those fire arrows set that tower on fire? I don't know if they can. Um... Either way, those uh, those goblin archers trying to do the same as Blue Rangers. Well, uh, sorry, that that those are Blue Rangers forces. He's just got them set up over here now too. Um, God, they are very messy looking, aren't they? So, but yeah, either way, he's he's just standing his ground, and we're quite lucky. He's just sort of wasting a bunch of ammunition from those Terra Terra marksmen. Uh, yeah, yeah, these are these are the rest of the unit. A little bit lost and confused. Never really seen any. Never really seen units on the on the side of the bridge like this. Oh well, good. And I think they're coming on down now. That was a nice effort, boys, but I, I, I don't know really what, what you were doing. But they're coming on down now. Goblin infantry still stand the ground there as a safe. If he wants to shoot at them, great. It's a lot of just... It's, it's a lot of trading back and forth right now, but it's not really trading that either of us are, are too upset about. This Olakai... Coming in, cracking into the uh, Rudauer Swordsman. Rudauer Swordsman lacking AP there is is a bit of bit of a nuisance, but at least they've got a very large attack value. And in addition to this, they're fighting quite close by to the Barrow Whites. Whoa! You didn't take him out, did you? No, he's getting back up. I was like, guy's got a hell of an arm on him. We just took them took out the Barrow White with one swing. But you can see the Belagar infantry, they're shake, they're wavering and shaken by this. Now, there's a lot less of them in that unit, but uh, the very stubborn morale of the Rudar men, that's that's a, one of the reasons that Rudar is one of my favourite factions, is just that great morale value. For an evil man, their morale is better, the morale of their main line, is better than many Western kingdoms of men. So, you can trust them to actually fight, and fight for a good amount of time. And they're chewing through this, now they're getting defeat is certain, they're not going to be doing much damn well... 
They're going to be doing some damage against the Barrow Whites. Uh, the Pikes right now... Oh, uh, sorry, these are Minas Morgul Chosen. They're going to struggle to get into them. But overall, not a bad move, but like they need some support because they are... You can, they're not going to... They are going to run. <laughs> but uh, overall, we pushed them on back there. What's going on here? Yeah. Angmar Halberd's holding the line there. Troll Drummer's bound in a... Well, banging away, not bound in a way. Um, Spearman jumping on down. Angmar Marauders uh, probably ripping peace. I don't know. Yeah, well, outnumbered that much, the Angmar Marauders will go down. The Heavy Goblin Spears are, are a great unit. Really, they are. So they're, uh, they're coming on in, just chewing into them. And very sturdy, guys, too. As I say, that same nice armor value and e an even better shield value. So if they did want to start shooting at them, they would need to make sure that they're not hitting that shield. <laughs> Haven Guard just staring us down like, what can we do? You know, uh, and this is the problem with, with Erebor here. Viverax going much more just numbers focused. Like, we can't, you know, we don't have an endless amount of elite units to throw at them. So we are coming in through the main gate there. But uh, Erebor's morale, not quite as sturdy as khazad Doom. So this, the fear causing Barrow Whites mixed in with just a very solid front line of, of Doran Ernal Pikes and uh, Ethel and Halbert is, uh, is not a fun fight for them. I'm going to be backing them up soon, I think. Oh, no, I've, I'm getting my Pelagor Marines over here to see if there's anything I, th I can throw at. These early stages of the fight, even though we're getting quite aggressive in other areas, we're still in the early stage of the fight. Now, as I was saying before about making sure that that shield doesn't come into effect, they're getting shot from the right side now, so they have uh, had their wishes fulfilled. Goblin Tracker's coming on down to try and make use of that, but either way, a nice little, uh, good armor value on them for the cost of the unit. Or, for, uh, they're quite an expensive unit, actually, <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for the quality of that unit. Uh, Rudar Swordsman here tearing through the Guardians of Karndum, but I guess the Guardians of Karndum are kind of going back and forth. They're not really fighting them. In an extended fight, the Guardians of Karndum, especially with that armor upgrade, they would break them. Numenorean Shield Guard, they're breaking at 31, but they really overextended. Oh, I guess they they, stu they got stuck into the Orc Javs. That's what they were going for, but it's a shame that they were, they, they're they not going to be making it out. Numenorean Cohort breaking in through the main gate now. Uh, sort of replacing some Rudar Swordsman. We need some AP here. We need something uh, solid, either like a Halberdier or or an Axeman, something something that's going to be able to break through those uh, Barrow Whites. Because right now, even as good as the Numenorean Cohort are, that's not what they can do. Uh, Rudar Marksman jumped up here now as well. They've just been grabbed by the Temple Executioners. That's not something they can handle. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit too early to try and claim the walls with Archers. If you can if you can claim the walls early with Archers, it is an amazing thing. You can do so much damage with it on the walls. But... Um, yeah, it's, you've got to wait for the right time. Ah, damn. These guys just broke there. 75 of them. Hopefully they will come back. Uh, because quite most of that force will come, uh, will return. Damn. That was a good jab volley. That was just the orc jabs. Yeah, that was just a, a little unit of orc jabs. And we saw how much damage that suddenly just did. And that is onto their left side. So the shields are are being useful. Rudar Swordsman, you need to return. A much more stubborn jab unit in the form of the Seafarers. But they're throwing their jabs right up. Ugh. Got to be careful about that. What am I trying to do with my archers here? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, these are Gondorian archers. Shuffling them out, shuffling them about. What, I, what I'm, of course, trying to do is set them up nicely so that I can try and just shoot across this wall. And you can usually get a nice shot on these units hiding here or, uh, or just something. Something around there. If you've got a nice long-ranged archer, which the Gondorian archers are, are okay for that. So I'm trying to position some men to do that. Gondorian infantry just watching over the uh, the goblin charge, trying to just see where I can fit in. I really am trying to be support faction. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned it in the last battle. I either like to attack entirely by myself, or I like to be a be a much more supporting role. If I if I'm uh, yeah, I don't really like to lead uh, group assaults really. So I'm trying to just see what they are doing uh, and back them up how I see fit. Gondorians, kind of like the dwarves of the ma of the of humankind. Very sturdy armor, uh, lower in the damage categories perhaps, but yeah, coming on in here, those Barrow Whites are not going to be fun to break through, but we're just kind of wearing them on down through the main gate and uh, and seeing what we, what we can do. My The only forms of AP I really have are my Axemen and my, my Fountain Guard. 
And I didn't really want to get my fountain guard stuck in there right now. Not while they still had so many javelins to uh, to spend on me. So I'm kind of just trying to tease that out. That's why I'm sending these uh, Gondorian infantry forward. Because I will do some damage and I will get some kills. But I really am just wanting Mirko to be like, okay, yeah. They've, uh, they've got a unit of quality there. Let's kill it. Because uh, I, I had victory for a moment. So I am uh, I am dropping the occasional barrel white. Was that uh, what's the staff of his halberd? That's a that's a cool little purple blue color there. I never noticed that. I thought they were just like silver. Oh well, nice. Uh, but yeah, those halberds will be doing some good work up against my Gondorian infantry, even with uh, you know a nice defensive value uh, that my boys have. Veterans of Asgiliath coming on forward. Uh, far too often, uh, especially in sieges, my veterans of Asgiliath get thrown into the fight before they've actually used up their ammo. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen here. Even if I'm maybe not picking the perfect targets for my for my archers, they are uh, they're hopefully going to be put to use. We saw a routing unit there. Probably the Gondorians, well, sorry, the heavy goblin spears they've been fighting for a while, replaced by these infantrymen. Uh, goblin trackers there. Uh, it's, oh yeah, so those are the spearmen running away. It's not very often that heavy goblin infantry are going to be able to slice through things in droves, but, um, yeah, the, the goblin trackers, they'll do that. <laughs> that's a, that's a good fight for the, for the heavy goblin infantry. Uh, which is nice to see. It's good to see the, the, the small armoured Moria boys uh, get stuck in something that they can deal with. Infant, well, sorry, the spears trying to run away, 38 of them. Uh, I do not see them returning. 30 is not an impossible number though and they are running through a lot of our men so it's 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 it could happen it could happen we can uh, we can hope snag a skirms coming over here blue ranger is mixing it up he is trying to see like can his, can any of his units be more effective over here so we're always very grateful for that dragon slayers of erid mithrin look like they're coming on in so this is a good early well rather early use we're 15,000 16 almost thousand frames in but still an elite unit is appearing but as soon as that elite unit appeared Belfast marines opened up uh, to target them but my uh, my gondorian infantry are taking the flak for that these smaller dwarves mixing in amongst them of course the dwarves still do have the same hitbox as a as a human does uh, cheaper sake they would be way too powerful if they had a if they had a hitbox that was the the exact size of them you just wouldn't be able to shoot them it's like the same situation as with hobbits. You try and blast away at the hobbits, they're just like ducking under it. Ooh, oh, got some action up here. Got my Gondorian infantry backing up some uh, heavy goblin spears. Just uh, heavy goblin spears getting some AP down. Ah, so we got a phalanx on the walls here in the form of these Angmar halberds. Oh, I should probably look for an image. That's kind of cool. I like, uh, we can maybe make something like that work. Just something a bit simple, but uh, should be like reliably... Kazadum though. Not Kazadum, Karndum. Oh, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm sure we got we got we got enough to look at there. Get immense there, but this is something that I was glad with. I'm exposing my left side. So those goblin trackers hitting the shield value of the Gondorian infantry, then getting into the massive armor value of my max upgraded Gondorian infantry. We're gonna shrug off that damage. That's not gonna do too much for us. I was very pleased um, uh, with that target. And the heavy goblin spears as well. Uh, exposing their left side, they're they're going to be doing okay from that fire too. Phalanxes on the walls are always a very risky prospect. When you do get them in setups like this, they can actually do some good work, but um, yeah, they they're just not really fighting as a phalanx right now. They are just sort of individual troops, so we are be able, we are pushing into them and, and breaking them down. What have we got going on here? No pushing through there. It's a very I, I was kind of praising our, our much more relaxed approach earlier, but you can see the issues with it now. We're not coming in at the same places. Well, we're not coming in at the same times. We're just, but this, you know, with that, we're able to just gently wear the enemy down. Now, uh, as, much, as glad as I was about how this was going originally, now my Gondorian infantry are facing the wrong way and they are getting eviscerated for it. But I think I'm trying to run on through. Yeah, you can see these guys here. I'm trying to run through my men because I want to, I think I want to run all the way along the wall. And my aim with that is I want to run all the way along the wall and try and see if I can engage these Haven Guard. So I'll move my, yeah, this was my plan. Get the Wardens of the White Tower up front, engage the Haven Guard there, and then get my Gondorian infantry, slamming them from the side. That was, that was what I was going for here with these guys. That's why I'm running this way. But so many gobbles to run through. It's a bit disconnected. 
and uh, everybody will know once uh, once a unit starts to get this far apart. Oh, Jesus, Kremlin boys! Ouch! Some uh, these these axes are not fun to deal with. But at least the scourge raider is coming into my Gondorian infantry. Um, it hurts, but and that's them done. That's them finished now. So, okay, it could have it could have been it could have been a worse unit, really. Uh, my Gondorian infantry with their heavy armor can uh, can withstand that heat better than uh, many people can. So, okay, if it's got to be done, it's it's got to be done. But yeah, gathering my infantrymen here because they got so separated out. Uh, but I'm still I'm still moving through my plan, still getting ready for it. No engagement here, but we're still pushing through this gate. Get my axemen of Lasanak forward now, uh, smashing into those barrow whites. I'd like to say that I was a big part of bringing those Barrow Whites down, but I really think it was like the Dragon Slayers of Ered Mithrin, their armor piercing in melee too. Uh, there's only nine of them left. Uh, but those Belfast Marines are done now. So coming on in, just cracking through what's left of the Barrow Whites and breaking into that pike line. We're making some progress. Um, we are 21 for 22. So we're neck and neck, which in any stage of a siege attack, if you're an attacker and you're neck and neck, it's okay. You know, that's that's usually the uh, place that you want to be as an attacker. Uh, just because we've got so much more than they do. And they really do rely on their uh, on their ranged power a bit more than we do. Most time, most of the time, anyway. Blue Rangers infantry breaking in pretty hard here to this uh, Gundabad front line. And uh, the Skur Traders are just mincing them from, this, from the flank. But uh, so many troops around and those Cave Troll drummers banging away outside too. Will hopefully keep the men in line. I didn't used to take cave troll drummers when I when I played as Misty. I was quite good at just sort of managing the uh, the morale of uh, of everybody just with my Goblin King bodyguard, and usually the White Uruk fearmongers they have a morale buffing effect too. So that was oftentimes just enough for me. But I do when I when it comes to a siege attack, uh, I I think you do benefit a lot from uh, from having those guys. I get my oh team. Why am I doing this? Oh. It's coming. Uh, okay, it's a bit connected there, but I still don't like that. That's not how. Yeah, okay, that's not how. That's not what you want. They've actually used up all their ammo. Crap. Oh well, I just poured my. I a lot of my ammo went into the scourge raiders there. I think I remember I threw into the scourge raiders and then I threw into the pikes, but I tried to get like a direct shot against the pikes. Didn't work out, as you saw. Still hit most of them, but probably got a bit of friendly fire against my poor gobo allies. Over here now. Yes, yeah, no no real pressure. Ah, some engagement outside. Actually, Sun's come outside with his infantry. Or sorry, archers to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Belagar archers. Still those Oleg High smashing into the uh, the Rudauer Hillman. But uh, yeah, it's no major gains from either side. What have we got? Got my Gondorian spears coming on in now. Just providing a lot of uh, stubborn... Uh, well, just a lot of stubborn nature to uh, to the front line alongside the goblins. Uh, not going to be going down easy. Get my Nimlothian Honor Guard over there to, now too. Ah, yes, they actually did have some ammo. And uh, I volleyed into the Haven Guard a little bit. So came around here. I tried it with my infantry, but I ended up putting the infantry down here to block that way. And then I got the Pelagar Marines to rattle into the Haven Guard. Now, I could have gotten closer, but Pelagar Marines, they can generally hit their hit the mark. So charged them on in there now, and I'm running the Warns of the White Tower to engage them too. So quite badly bloodied. You can see sort of the uh, the bloodied nature spreading across the entire unit. So I've hopefully done some good damage with those uh, volleys. But I was just wishing I had more to give. Coming in through the main gate now, Axman of Sanak fighting alongside the dwarves. This is just a lot of armor on the front line. And we're we're gaining ground slowly but surely. Black, uh, sorry, yeah, Black Swan Renegades there with their armor-piercing maces are not going to be fun to deal with. Uh, Terrathair Marksmen still looking for a target. They've got a few volleys left. Pelagar Marines actually faring okay. I guess it's just the amount of damage I had done to the Haven Guard uh, with their with their javelins that we were able to sort of hurt them. But I think the longer that goes on, once the Haven Guards sort of stabilize a bit, they'll do quite nicely. But uh, all they have to do is wait for the Wardens of the White Tower. The Wardens of the White Tower have jumped up here and sort of just, well, 1v40'd the, uh, the Haven Guard that were standing up. And uh, they'll be able to jump on down. Infantry, they're almost broken. Nimlothian Honor Guard standing in to sort of either take their place or, or back them up somewhere. 
and uh, and just tear through these. Well, they're not they're not there to get kills. They're there to hold the hold the line, provide a distraction for the main uh, main attack. Let's go to zero point nine just to. I don't know. It's that's it's that extra zero point uh, zero point one bit of speed because I think I am missing some things. I get in here with my fountain guard, but you can see the fountain guard took a lot of fire. I think they got some jabs or, or, or something thrown at them, and it really did drop them. But uh, going to t as long as they organise, they will do very well. But Gundabad guard kind of splitting them off. Let's uh, zoom on in to kind of see that bit better. You can see we really have punctured punctured on in. Uh, but there's quite a bulge here from the from the Gundabad guard that are breaking this down. Heavy Goblin Halberdiers, though, that'll do quite nicely. We've got two, basically the two extremes of uh, of Swordmaster there. The Ravenhelms coming in alongside the Black Orcs off the mountains. And, uh, yeah, just to back up this force a bit more. Fountain Guard there, very nice, but oh, we don't want them fighting Goblin Trackers. They'll, they'll butcher Goblin Trackers quite efficiently, but there are, there are things that we really want them to be killing instead. The Snow Trolls coming in here, messing up the Wanderers, actually jumping up on the walls even. Uh, to help back up the crossbows, keep them firing. And uh, yes, Numenorians and Rudauer forces, yeah. Uh, this, there was a lot of communication between these two and they did decide to get in very hard at this point. Pikes, slowly but surely, mincing their way through the Barrowites. Barrowites, of course, very light in terms of mass, so they can't really push through pikes, but that very light mass actually proves to give them an, a weird advantage that I think works really well to their more ghostly nature. Because they're so light, they can get thrown around, and sometimes they can get thrown inside the unit. You know, we, when we see an enemy, well, a unit of cavalry throw units around, the Barrowites kind of do that just by bumping into infantry, which is really awesome. Rudar Swordsman there taking some fire from the Adunaim Shadow Bows, Dun uh, Son of the Dunedain, uh, or Son of the Dunedain, just trying to get some use out of them, but, uh, oh, nice mixture of armor upgraded Rudar Clansmen with non armor upgraded Rudar Clansmen. Just, again, just coming flooding on in. Numenor alongside the Rudar Hillman, but if they're getting, uh, yeah, I feel if they're getting dedicated to an actual push here and they're gaining good ground, they need to, de they, they just need to dedicate a bit more to it right now. We're at 41 for 44, so we are ahead at this point, which is an amazing situation to be in. I get my Gondorian archers over here, and I'm just pouring uh, shots into whatever I can really get. Uh, I did actually shoot a bit into the Goblin Trackers, just to try and free up my uh, my Fountain Guard, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And these uh, these Gardens of Karn Doom are getting prepared to stop me. Nimlothian Honor Guard actually jumped on down here, but uh, they quite quickly attracted the attention of the Dismount Knights of the Silver Swan and these Athelid Men-at-Arms. But I get my Pelagar Marines over here to back them on up as the Wardens of the White Tower finish off what's left of the Haven Guard. Actually saying that, Jeepers, they're struggling. And there's still this full unit of Haven Guard over here, butchering some Snaga, Snaga Skirmishers. I'm getting my Axemen of Sanak up there. I think I just wanted to engage these Haven Guard. I didn't want them to pull the Haven Guard down and throw them anywhere. But maybe that was a bad idea. Hmm. Oi, oi, oi. Either way. A little bit disappointed with this situation here. The the Haven Guard, but well, well, the Haven Guard are very damn good, and they should be. So they are sort of beating my uh, my wardens there. My Nimalothian Honor Guard are doing the best they can. They formed this sort of circle that looks quite cool on the mini map there. That's actually quite nice. Um, oh, I don't know. Can I make that a, a cool thumbnail? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I like it all the same. Just the Mlothian Honor Guards uh, formed up in that situation, just trying to fend off the, the Dol Amroth forces. Pelagon Marines coming in to free them from the encirclement, but I need something more. These Gondorian Archers can come on in once they're out of ammo, but uh, but I want to get them used up what they've got first. Ooh, Guardians of Karndum breaking through there. Oh no, Ironfoot Crossbow's leaving me, um, but uh, I don't have too many more shots with the Goblin, well, sorry, Gondorian Archers. I actually tried to run away from the Guardians of Karndum there. Uh, what we got? Goblin archers rushing on forward, and it is what's left of Blue Ranger is starting to uh, to flood on in now, and my reinforcements here are coming on in in with them too. I don't have anything more left there. Do I have anything more here? I've got no nothing. Uh, yeah, we've got one unit of axe guard, so I am uh, all pretty much forward. Got Pelagon Marines looking for a target. Veterans of Asgiliath looks like they want to jump on in, and that's it. So I engaged him with the Axemen of La Sanak. Yeah, this was maybe just a bad move, the more I think about it, because they are just getting minced. They will hurt the, the Haven Guard, but 
Merkel was just having them there. He was just having us, having them watch that area, and I just think that, that was a bad move to, to send them on forward. Gondorian spearmen now, too, backing up the wardens of the White Tower, trying to come in and finish that job. Nimlothian honor guards still fighting their heart out, but uh, they need some backup. I get actually, I, yeah, okay, I get my Gondorian archers there. Oh, blasting the catapult crew. Yeah, I was just shredding them from here. There's nowhere they could, they could really run. Catapult crew, of course, being unshielded. And that's where Mirko has his general, too, which was quite a temptation. Oh, I, I even charged in my Pelagor Marines to try and fight them, but they ended up breaking. They killed a handful, but uh, yeah, was not enough. Fountain Guard here have fallen. Still got some Raven Helms trying their best. Gondorian archers now just having to hold back the gardens of Karn Doom. But uh, yeah, no, look. Yeah, you can see sort of the unit is coming on over there now. I think they are actually out of ammo. Yeah, it looks like they're out of ammo. So I just felt like get over there, stop the gardens of Karn Doom so that the uh, Ironfoot crossbows can uh, fire into the little Lamroth men unopposed. Coming on down here with my uh, last surviving unit of Fountain Guard. Yeah, they, even up against pikes. Halberds can generally beat pikes if they're uh, off good enough quality. Pikes will always have a little bit of an advantage just because they're that extra bit of range, but the Fountain Guard are uh, are very, very good. Warns the White Tower now here actually coming over to mess up these Haven Guard. Do I have anything coming up here? No, I do not. No. Erebor Legionnaires coming on up. No. Coming up though, so that's fair enough. But still, I just think we're pouring in too much of our resources into sort of dealing with these Haven Guard that are not actually threatening anybody. You know, we really should have been focusing elsewhere. Yeah, these Pelagor Marines are just some of the survivors that went off trying to stop that catapult crew. Gondorian archers here. Yeah, trying to stop the Guardians as they flood on forward. Not looking too good for their morale, though. So if they end up shaking, damn, we missed this. Sorry about that. Um, that is, of course, the sign of the Witchers. Uh, burning through a lot of goblins there. A lot of goblin halberdiers. Anything really fancy there? Or does it just look like goblin halberdiers? Yeah, goblin halberdiers and uh, probably some goblin infantry. And yeah, these poor these poor goblins are just frozen. Just absolutely frozen in fear. They don't know if they want to run away or, or, or whatnot. But And this uh, the sudden killing of the of the witchers mixed in with a fear causing barrel whites. That's not, that's not fun. And uh, the Angmar Halberds coming on in to back them up. Witchers being pulled back for, uh, by uh, Medieval Feud there. It's a good idea. And some elite infantry coming in to finish the job. We're at 67 for 65. Certainly not an insurmountable um, loss on our side. Got my Gondorian archers opening up onto the backs of these Ang uh, sorry, Mordor Halberds. Or Moranin Halberds. And the Minas Morgul Chosen trying to back up the shield guard there. Broken unit of Rudar clansmen. But uh, yeah, maybe I should have just been waiting with them to, to fire. I did fire, I did use these units to fire into the Witchers when they came down, but maybe I should have held their ammo. But no, I was just wanting to. Um, I felt like if we're if we're gonna win somewhere, it's gonna be over here. Uh, the Numenorians and the the Rudar forces have done a pretty damn good job. So if I can just pro provide a little bit of assistance. And just allow them to come through and have quite a few of their numbers and organization left, then that's uh, that's great. We can see the Royal Legion of Armenolos have gotten in. That's my general drop there, brought down by a Black Swan Renegade. Um, but yeah, if we can just uh, wipe them out here, that'd be useful. Uh, yeah, sorry, troll uh, troll drummers there. One troll drummer left. It is the captain. Now I believe that he still does provide that morale buff. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't see why he wouldn't. So, oh yeah, my Nimlothian Honor Guard, just few of them remaining. I get, well, one of them remaining. So I get him stuck into the uh, the catapult crew. Oh, he's sort of stunlocked there. Get get fighting, boys. Ah, oh, damn, because he could, he could be mincing through these guys. I don't know why. He, okay, he is fighting back now. Uh, little by little, he is going to be taking down this catapult crew. Gets them off the catapult anyway, but the, the dream with him is to get him stuck into the enemy general there of Marco, because that will be quite a weak general uh, because well like my general he was just in a one hit point unit but in doing so he's kind of gotten himself thrown into this little 3v1 or 4v1 situation now he is an Emilothian honor guard but he's very badly damaged and he's just taking swipe after swipe so he is probably going to go down Mirko is targeting him now and uh, oh he's managed to get his generals sort of running away from him that's a shame he is dropping these guys really quick though so uh, uh, we can take what we can get Crossbowmen there, 38 
iron foot crossbows running away and they're going to jump right into the backs of these guardians of Cardum and, uh, and and unfortunately just get swallowed up they might yeah they're turning around now uh, they've realized that that's not a safe way out ah damn no they're stuck between a rock and a hard place unfortunately but we have managed to break on in here and these bloody haven guard are still standing after all of that they're still around but i've gotten enough ground that i can actually use my pelagon marines going into the tirithair marksman that's well the wonder is an emmerdale are definitely a better target um, I think I just felt that we needed to cleanse the numbers over here, but I probably should just save that ammo. Tier 3 Marksman were shooting at us, though. I don't know. Probably a bad, bad move on my part. And I think I did fear that these Haven Guard were just going to jump over and stop me. Which I think they have just done. Still got these Dwarves outside Highborns alongside one unit of Erebor Legionnaires. I'm pretty much dead in the water. Um, I think... Nope, nope, those are Durn Ur Dor and Ernal Pikes. Our brave, yeah, Nimlothian Ornigard has finally been brought down. Catapult crew, Lee, oh no, they, they are they are taking the catapult with them, which I was very disappointed with. And, uh, yeah, they've still got that blocked up by the, uh, by the Barrow Whites. Not, uh, still 121 Barrow Whites, though. Gondorian Archer's broken. Gondorian Spear's broken. They're just sort of bugged out there. Do I have anything? I don't know if I have um, anything. Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I still, of course, I've still got these guys. Good. We've dropped the Mordor general and uh, the axes of the Rudar. Well, the Rudar axemen there uh, will certainly do some good work up against the up against the Uruk captains. Uh, Herendain pikes, very useful there, outranging these uh, Moron halberds. Oh, good little lone axeman up against the Minas Morgul Chosen. Still some Rudar uh, marksmen alive. Shadow bows fighting alongside the Uruk captains. Surprised at how well those Rudar axemen are doing, to be honest. Got some good uh, Gondor archers that are out of ammo. Uh, I'm kind of just having them run away. Oh no, I think they're not actually out of ammo. Um, they were shooting. Yeah, I moved them up and I shot right into the back of this little melee there. But those uh, hammer guard are chasing them off. So I kind of felt like, look, if he wants to have the hammer guard pursue me there, that's fair enough. At least the hammer guard are not fighting other guys there. Oh god, I'm really sandwiched. Oh, that's a shame. I got absolutely brutalized there. I didn't notice that. Ouch. I guess I was uh, trying to micromanage my uh, my boys over here. I've got my... Ooh. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Um, no, I think I'm trying to stop that with something. No. Over here, I've got my Pelagor Marines, yeah, breaking through, and uh, the Gondorian Spears are running to try and stop this. Uh, I got lucky, got lucky with that, and uh, still charging. They're not going to get, they're not going to be able to get another one, but I'm wavering at that. And eleven fully health, uh, well, if they've got full health, eleven Witchers will definitely be able to beat me in melee. I do have my five veterans of Isgiliath. My generals dropped, but at least I do have my veterans of Isgiliath. And then I've got 55 Pelagor Marines, all just swarming in on these Witchers. To be honest, these Witchers are probably out of ammo, but I still felt I wanted to take them on out. Damn, Gondorian Spear's broken there. Uh, 65 of them. And uh, now, oh, Pelagor Marines? Oh, they're wavering. I think the, Pel yeah, the Pelagor Marines still had ammo. Um, so I tried to pull them out to actually throw with them, hoping that... Uh, We'd be able to block them off with something else, but it's uh, it's not easy. Some burning uh, burning corpses there too of my poor uh, spearmen. I'm good, 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 good. Yeah, fixed it. Um, oh dearie me, my poor Gondorian spears. Yeah, dancing around there. Um, we have taken down the Witcher's uh, ten, and luckily Veverax is coming in to finish uh, what I couldn't do. But uh, I'm still trying to get my Pelagor Marines away. Uh, even if we could kill off that general of medieval feud, goodness me. I'd love it if they came back. 65 guys would be very useful in this stage. Guardians of Karndum standing by, trying to, well, trying to mince what's left of those crossbowmen. Axe Guard of Erebor. Looks like there's maybe a fight going on inside the wall there. Oh, yeah, I did manage to get that done. I just got, I managed to get them into guard mode and just threw point blank uh, into these guys. Probably, oh, yeah, I've even got my fountain guard in there. Um,. So I was chuffed a bit with that. I was, I was glad that I was able to just kill off the general, but even then, uh, killing a few of the witchers. There's three witchers left, though. One of them's a banner carrier. One of them's surrounded there, but I think they're they're out of ammo. Like, Medieval Feud wouldn't have let us kill them all um, if they weren't. But even then, just taking them out and you know, taking them out is quite useful. 
turned around. I was just, I just spotted these guys. I was like, I really wish I threw some jabs at them, but I did. So that's great. So uh, nice heavy armor upgraded uh, medieval feuds. Oh, well, sorry, heavy armor upgraded uh, witch on pikes. Uh, quite useful. So bringing them down is, uh, is certainly not a bad use of my javs, and a good quality javelin unit like the Belagar, uh, like yeah, like the Pelagar Marines or the Belfast Marines, they're quite accurate. You know that's something that uh, I've really been uh, been loving from the recent playthrough of uh, of Enidwyth. You know even though, even though my javs are definitely not as powerful as javs are in a lot of. Uh, Okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. Even though my jabs are definitely not as powerful as the jabs are in Reforged, um, I am noticing that my jabs are very accurate uh, because generally that's in the Dwight's whole thing. But I absolutely, like, that's so sad. They fired off the, the catapult shot. These guys are totally surrounded. Axemen there, Fearmonger is there, but no. They land right on, on top of two Hammer Guard. Like, that's so sad. Either way, Hammerguard are going to be getting minced by those Fearmongers. I know it says, well, to be honest, uh, no, no, nah, nah, they're, they're going down. Fearmongers are no joke. Like, armor-piercing halberds up against an elite unit. Yeah, no, no, ain't. Sorry, buddy. You know, it just, it'd it be how it'd be. Uh, oh, which, uh, sorry, Horrendine Pikes. And the good thing about Horrendine Pikes, too, is uh, they, they, they provide that uh, morale buff. It's it's a little thing, but it's it's something to keep in, keep in mind. Farazm Swordmaster's running on through, ignoring that troll drummer. Ah, uh, chasing the Temple Guard. That's why he's ignoring the troll drummer. Um, I yeah yeah that's smart. Oh, returning fire and colliding perfectly with that catapult. Now, okay, it's taking out a catapult. You know, unless you can really sort of take out all of the enemy catapults, it's it's not super duper useful. Oh, okay. Bringing down some Herinidine pikemen there, but uh, I think every little helps. Um, lots of these. Ooh, another strike. That's a bit more messy, but that's quite close to the Nazgul, so I don't think a Nazgul got burned up. But that would be. Uh, I would hold my fire just out of the out of the real concern that uh, how much damage you could do there. Cave troll drummers there from uh, Blue Ranger coming on over here, <laughs> fighting alongside my Pelagor Marines and my Fountain Guard. Yeah, we're flooding on in now. Now, we've got 88 for 91, so we are ahead. That is uh, that is something that I was very pleased about. Yep, my pikes, sorry, my Gondorian Spearmen did return. So, I've still got them, but I really do not have many troops remaining at this stage. What we got running up here? Iron Foot Boys. Just trying to block them off, make sure that they don't get... Uh, well, I think he's trying to run up here and stop them from getting that uh, that catapult back. It's not a very long distance, but catapults are very slow, and catapults are also a bit buggy. But I think what Mirko is trying to do here is he's just trying to use up all of his ammunition so that he doesn't have to uh, bring it back. That's a good shot in there. Definitely some uh, some nice important fear mongers taken out, and even some rude axemen to uh, to add on top of that. But if, if the fear mongers can come around here, they would quite efficiently deal with what's left of those barrel whites. Angmar Halberds, Medieval Feud, just trying to get them back. We've had, we have we have managed to catch up to the Temple Guard. But they're once again trying to run away. Sun is not wanting to take that fight. Temple Guard are pretty good sword masters, but uh, no, they are nowhere near capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fires and sword masters. What I could be doing is running in this center area, to be honest. The Blackwatch Legion would, would mess me up, but I do like the idea of us pushing all three of these sections at once. I think I'm sending my Gondorians over here to just help them out. What am I doing with them anyway? Oh, ah, yes, the uh, the Hammer Guard wanting to trap them. So I've got my uh, Pelagon Marines engaging them there. I actually get my two veterans of Asgeliath here that still have ammo uh, to try and shoot them in the back. Hopefully nice and accurate. Shouldn't really be missing at this range, boys. Yeah, I think that might have, might have actually been a mess, but oh well. Uh, Axe Yard coming around their backs. If they get a good flank and a good charge in, that is perfect. And that will be the end of those Hammer Guard. So percentages are definitely not too far off, but we've managed to catch a lot of their important units. And uh, still chasing those Temple Guard. Temple Guard are going to get inside. Farzim Swordmasters are chasing, which is risky. If we continue like but this, there's nothing left in here. More non archers. There's. Uh, all these guys are bugged out. Wanderers and Emmerdale coming on down. Dismounted Knights of Silver Swan. Not too many of them, though. Has he pulled back? 
Interesting. He, uh, Gilgalad fell back from that. I, hmm. I might have, I think, well, he, he wants to go and deal with the catapult, but to be honest, I would have pushed in. The Temple Guard are not going to stop you. There's nothing else that sounds well yet, but yeah, they, they would be able to butcher everything here. And, uh, and really sort of claim the center. Spike a bit of chaos into them. But yeah, the defenders are coming on out, slamming into the Iron Foot Warriors there. Uh, Farsome Swordmaster is trying to catch up with the catapult. Uh, kill off Mirko's general. Yeah, I ju Oh no, this wasn't me, sorry. The uh, Highborns of Erebor coming on up. AP from those uh, Blackwatch Legion. And of course, we will definitely see the mass come into effect as they are just sort of shunting these dwarves around. But, uh, oh, I, yeah. Er you know, Highborns of Erebor are going to be a bit too much to deal with. Yep, they've left the catapult crew. Mirko just trying to save his general. They've done their job. They've they've secured the catapult. So yeah, if you want to come down, just backstab these Blackwatch Legion. Deal with them quite quickly. Um, Mirko's trap. He can't come back in there. I like that he is coming back to try and secure the uh, the catapult. Um, yeah. Oh god. Risky. Risky. Yeah, he's he's gonna do it. He's gonna grab it. Angmar Halberd's there to get thrown in his way. So Virus and Swordmaster's coming on back. Nah, no, damn dude. No, it ain't gonna work out. It ain't gonna work out. Not unless they were able to just immediately fire. What's this? Belfast Marine. One of Mirko's Belfast Marines. I love the axes of the Belfast Marines. I think that's that's a really cool thing they've got going on. Minus Morgul Chosen running away. Uh, Troll Drummer running off with the Nazgul. Still four Nazgul. It was two units, actually. So yeah, there's, there's eight Nazgul remaining, but uh, very bloodied and battered Nazgul. Uh, oh, there's one of them still just standing by here, killing off a few more Fearmongers. One guy just trying to do what he can, but uh, oh, nobody would uh, nobody blame you going down into that fight. Um, that's oh interesting. Okay, risky place I'd say. I, I well I don't know. I don't like putting my general in with halberd units. I just always um, yeah like the, the whole thing with the halberd. The strength is their their formation, and I always just think that like the corners do get like mangled. So putting your general there is just frightening to me. This one Nazgul is going to get out of here. So maybe not. One Naranar Nar Royal Guard uh, from Gelgalad coming in to try and shoot him up. Which is quite a, quite a cool thing to see. Harenadine Pikes. Witch Roman Slavers. Some uh, Rangers there. Fountain Guard there. What am I doing with my Fountain Guard? Uh, oh yeah, I just thought I'm going to come out here and kill what's left of the Barrow Whites. You know, just, just, le just get all the Blue Rangers boys in. And I'll just uh, I'll just mop up outside. <laughs> I've got my I've got my spears and my uh, my fountain guard that should be able to do that quite efficiently, and that just leaves everybody else to focus on what's actually going on inside. Uh, the catapult has been properly secured now, but it looks like the catapult crew is running away. Yeah, they're they're getting out. Just keep, uh, the, keeping the general alive is, is is important. One troll drummer, yeah, troll drummer captain getting inside now, and I think we're going a bit faster now because. We do have to get some ram sorted out. I think we did preempt that, and we do have somebody running out to get a ram. No, 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 no. Um, well, there would be a ram somewhere here. So I think they have captured that. Erebor Legionnaires. Yes, they've got it. Yes, yeah, so Viverax was able to spot that. And uh, I was sending somebody out to go get one, but I saw Viverax had one before me. So that is very good. Blackwatch Legion doing their best out here. Let's go to two times speed as, we, as they make their last stand. But Pharism Swordmasters on one side, Ironfoot Warriors and Highboards of Erebor on the other. It's not going to end well there. And even some Herinidine Pikes just to come and finish the job. Uh, Axemen, Rudar Axemen running off here, actually. Where are they going for? Oh, trying to get that catapult crew. Um, I guess he's really wanting to just see if there's an opportunity to save the catapult. But to be honest, I'd probably just get him inside now. I guess he's not really got anything to, you know, save. Royal Guardsmen there, just trying to snipe people down. Yeah, he should be hitting most of his, his, his shots. He's a very accurate archer. I'm getting my veterans of his Gilead in there too. Uh, so yeah, we've just got all of our sort of elite archers. What I wanted to do was run in there and block the gate from him. That's what I was trying. Um, oh, this one Nazgul's not getting in there either. Oh no. Oh. What am I doing? Yeah, tr do I try and stop them? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I cut... I, cut one guy down. No, I let him in. Damn. I could have I could have stopped him. I could have parked myself right in front of him. Do I run for oh, yeah, I tried to claim the gate, but it didn't work out. Oh well, a terrible shame. 
Uh, and now it's just a case of waiting for that ram to get up here. So what do they still have inside? They've still got uh, in total eight Nazgul. Um, bloodied and barred, no doubt. But we've got the Fires and Swordmasters. They've got the Temple Guard. They still do have some ammo. So they can sort of mince shots down. Uh, the General of Dol Amroth, he'll kill a few of us. But uh, all in all, yeah, we, st we still do have so much power remaining. Uh, that, uh, oh, my phone guard. Pelagon Marines, I was quite glad to have something left, to be honest. Because I was uh, pretty bloodied throughout most of this. The Catapult Crew for... Uh, for Rudauer, commanded, of course, by, well, controlled, of course, by the goblins. I think that's just to save on a, on a unit. There's no point in really giving them, uh, giving them their own catapult crew. Just, we need to, we need to save on the, on the units so that we can actually, you know, get these new factions, get Erd, uh, get Erd Lewin and get, uh, Dol Guldur in here. I find a good arc with my, with my shots. What am I going for? I think anything I can get, really. I'm just trying to... To be honest, if I hit these guys, they'd probably wake up, uh, which would go against me, in all honesty. I think I shot the goblin trackers, and then they ended up waking up. Hit them? More on archers? Yeah, I think I woke them up. I'm actually, I'm going against us here by trying to wake up the, uh, the, uh, frozen units. Hmm, interesting. I've never seen them do that animation before. Just, like, kind of, yeah. Huh, odd. Oh, cool. Uh, I think he's maybe trying to unbug some of his boys. But no, that, that's not going to work. These occasional just shots landing down are just my archers. Come on. We tried to ask them, like, hey, do you want to just open the gate and let us in? But nah, it's, it's fair enough. Like, the gate's part of their defences. A few of these guys bugged out here. Well, not bugged, but stuck in a corner. One ranger. Some enslavers. There's a lot of power stuck in that little section there. Which is a bit of a shame. I really like the swords of the Renadane uh, rangers. It's just, I don't know, there's something about the colour of it that's really cool to me. And they're smashing down that gate. Feverax has still got uh, a decent enough force, so he, I think he's going to be leading the charge on our side. And uh, I, I don't think we're going to wait for both to get open. It's only a few thousand frames, so no, I believe that as soon as we open up, we, uh, we just get stuck in. Airborne Legionnaires alone should be able to deal with what's left of those Temple Guard. Catapult crew can go down by just anything. And then uh, whatever they've got left. The, oh, the Nazgul are, are messy too. Oh, I think they, the Nazgul did actually come down and open that gate for us. That was nice of them. Having victory is certain there. Fountain Guard will hurt them. Catapult crew won't do too, mu won't do too much. Pilgrim Marines just coming on in and uh, just trying to slice them down. But the uh, Halberds are charging them forward. Goblin trackers from Medieval Feud standing in their way. It's, oh, it's always a sad day when goblins have to kill goblins. Uh, it's taken. Oh, they dropped the uh, the general of Rudauer there. And yeah, Erebor Legionnaires. More than enough for the Temple Guard and then everything else behind, too. So this was a this was a lot of fun. I um I really thought we'd lost this to be honest for a long time when I was playing it, but um, but no, we ended up uh, turning it around and uh, I think a lot of it was down to just the the boys coming through here. Like, they were really careful just at the start, just nip, 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 just little little grabs of territory, little uh, kills here and there. But then when they did flood in, they flooded in hard. And I think Rudauer and Numenor is a great, it's, it's a great, like, mix. Because you do have the uh, just outright fanatic aggression of the Rudauer forces and mixed up with the, you know, the heavy armor values and, and skill of Numenor. Oh, sorry, Numenor. And, um... No, so I think that they're really a good duo. Whereas over on our side, you know, we had Erebor and Gondor together, and uh, I think that they both kind of have some of the same advantages. So maybe it would have been better had I had I more come in the center alongside uh, the gobbles, and uh, so that we had that sort of armor value mixed all across. Either way, of course, it worked out, and uh, I'm pretty chuffed with with how it all went. Of course, just freeing all these units to kill them off. Uh, those uh, those remaining Nazgul are just so badly beaten that, uh, that that they would just be getting sliced to pieces at this point. Anyway, uh, Pelagon Marines there. I liked some of the sneaky stuff I did about just sort of running across the walls. Really is something you can do when the enemy doesn't, you know, fully garrison the walls. Uh, it's it's a good idea not to. You know, you can you can really do some damage on the open field, but um, you do allow your the attackers to have that just passageway 
and they can just take the walls to run around your territory or run around your fortress and uh, and do a lot of damage to you as we do as i like to think i did definitely screwed up by just feeding my my axemen lasanak into that haven guard blender and these are my two boys you can see them there yeah the two veterans of his Gilead just coming on in but um yeah, that was a screw up but ugh, it wasn't a massive screw up it, it was what it was and uh, i hurt them you know kept kept them busy and i hurt them a little bit but uh no haven guard they're powerful we we know that but yeah they, they really did mince and i guess seeing this i really am excited to see what the wards of the white tower are like skill wise if i think they'll be quite similar to the king elisar's vanguard perhaps even with a shield value because they will have that shield on their back let's have a zoom through my kills first yeah, veterans did actually manage to rack up some kills in melee, and uh, there were they still had a lot of their ammo left. So I didn't, you know, I said that right at the start, but yeah, wardens of the white tower. Most of the kills they got were haven guard, so that's all right. And then whatever kills they got on top of that was was just a nice little addition. Nimlothian honor guard, I really allowed them to get like as cool as that total surround was. That was pretty bad for them. They really could have been used a bit better. And um, I'm a bit sorry about what happened to them. One of the fountain guards did get just absorbed by shots, but he still did okay. He still he gained an experience point, so jeepers sake, he was fighting something pretty, uh, well, he was doing something pretty well. And this guy gained two, so the veterans of the Gil uh, veterans of the Gilgath, jeepers. Um, one of them was, was you know, I was pretty chuffed with them, though. Um, 160, yeah, yeah, 167. On an attack, that's a, that's a pretty decent amount of kills, uh, even for such a good unit. Ravenhelms, not too bad. Happy enough with that spearmen there uh, spearmen are more like especially gondor spearmen they are there just to be defensive and and like they don't rack up kills they they just don't die they're just very stubborn they rack up kills against cav of course but yeah these four kills from the asman lasanak yeah that was a that was a goof move they, they you know 76 not bad really should have uh, done that differently infantry across the board 30 ooh, okay yeah yeah oh well it is what it is um then Pelagon Marines, nice, 116. And then, of course, the other guys going into the uh, Fountain Guard, and uh, not Fountain Guard, Haven Guard. And then 120 for those Archers and 41 for the others. Okay, okay. Um, Gilgalad there, I, I mentioned Gilgalad and Ragnar. Kind of a shaky start, but I think that, yeah, when they did come in hard, they did it very well. And you can see, like, yeah, King Ragnar's numbers really did benefit them, just really swamping forward. And... Um, but overall, good good play from everybody. Uh, Blue Ranger really being our, our swarm and being willing to lose those numbers for us, which is nice when you are an orcish faction, especially Misty. Uh, you've got a lot of numbers to spare, so it's good that he was willing to to die for us and is in the way that he did. Medieval Feud there, good mixing up the Barrow Whites. I, I think it's always good to put a Barrow White on every access point just because how, how important they can really be. And it does mean that we can no longer, like, we can't just sit there with javelins and pour, or, you know, anything. We can't pour shots through it, through it yeah, because the Barrow Whites are just such good ammo sponges. And then Sun there, good stuff. Nice early sort of skirmishing actions with the, uh, with the Olakai. I always like that. And then Mirko in general, yeah, just pestering us uh, on our side. I think taking... What they did there, you know, was each of them did take a gate. I think that that is a good idea. You've got to be able to support each other, and I think they did that well. They did see, and they, they shuffled people around, but allowing taking a gate each really allows you to focus hard on one entrance by yourself, which is it means you don't really miss as much. But all in all, great stuff. Uh, was a really fun battle. Glad we glad we won. Was a, was a bit shaky for a while. Uh, what do we end up with? Well, of course, that's a lot of us. A lot of our boys healed back. I think it ended up being about like 90, 92% of our casualties. So pretty damn close. And uh, yeah, thanks guys a bunch. And uh, see you later.